In this episode, we continue training and mentoring the Manchester University WASP team as we go into a local backyard at a private residence to take on a very aggressive southern yellow jacket nest. So we collect them also for venom immunotherapy, and that's always the first phase we do, and that's what you see here. The second phase is digging out the brood comb. In this episode, we're going to show you how we experiment with a CO2 tank and fill the nest cavity with CO2 gas before we dig it out. The reason we did this is because we wanted to harvest as many of the wasps in that brood as possible for venom immunotherapy, especially the new queens. Usually when you open up a nest cavity, the new queens will attempt to flee and fly away. Instinctually, they just take off running and flying. In this case, we were able to prevent that by using the CO2 gas. As you can see here, the CO2 gas knocks out the wasps for a few minutes, and that gave us a chance to collect every single queen in this nest. And that's important because queens have venom sacs, so they're good for venom immunotherapy. Because of all the dirt and debris on a ground nest dig like this, we can't just put a vacuum down there and vacuum up all of the queens. So we had to come up with a better way to do it, which was CO2 gas. So here we could take our time, collect all the queens before they woke up, and get them all contained. In order to be useful for venom immunotherapy, all of our specimens have to be collected alive, be uninjured, and the collections have to be clean, no debris. So here you see the team getting these specimens ready to freeze in dry ice. And once they are frozen in dry ice, their venom is preserved at the highest quality possible for biomedical use or venom immunotherapy in this case. Once we have the specimens frozen, we take the brood comb and we transport it back to our barn lab and we begin to separate out all of the components in the nest. And we do this by using CO2 gas again. Here's another batch of queens we pulled out of this container. And here's a batch of males. Since the males have no venom and no venom sac and no stinger, they cannot be used for venom immunotherapy. But we can use them in a breeding program. We can use them to breed new queens if we want to raise this species in our lab. Or we can release them during mating season in the wild or they can be dried and kept as specimens for speaking engagements and education. If you'd like to watch the full episode in long form, click on the link in the description. Thanks for watching.